Welcome back to the third part of the ILS approach tutorial in the Boeing 737-800 default aircraft. In this part of the tutorial we're going to learn about activating the approach, learning about the Pappy lights on the airfield and flying the final approach into the airport and switching off the appropriate lights as we leave the runway. To start with, as we are currently on the approach, we're going to want to activate the approach, as you can see here in the procedure page of the GPS. If you click on enter, we will now see the approach procedure. Now, as you can see here, there's these weird circle lines that from here. This is the go around procedure if you miss if you miss the approach. Now currently as you can see, if we miss the approach, we're going to want to turn right to a heading of three five eight degrees and then do a left turn, a 30 degree bank left turn to the left to 148 degrees to intercept the left traffic pattern. Now now we currently activate the procedure, we do not currently need the GPS unless we're going to do a go around, so we can close that for now temporarily. And I'm just going to switch to the virtual cockpit so I can discuss about the Pappy lights. Now as you can see here, we have the Pappy lights here, we have two yellow on the left and two red on the right. Now that is what you want when you are inbound to an airport, that indicates that you are currently on the glide slope perfectly into the airport. Now if the lights on the left are also red, like the ones on the right, it means you are currently below the glide scope. So you are going to want to decrease the amount that you are descending by or actually rise a little if you are too low. And the two lights on the right, if they turn yellow as well as the ones on the left, it means you are too high. So you're going to want to increase your rate of def descent into the airfield. Now, in some airports, these are in a straight line along the airport or horizontal as we can see here. It's all the same principle. So, so you want the two on the left or the two nearest you to be yellow and the two on the right or the two furthest to be red to indicate that you are currently on the glide ship. So let's go back to the cockpit. As we prepare for landing, what we're going to want to do is about 100, 200 feet off the ground, we're going to get a warning for minimums. Now this means that if you are currently not ready for the landing, this is the point that you will go decide to go around. So if you are not set up for the landing properly, you will go around and follow the missed approach procedure which is found on the GPS that we can see here. So and that is about 200 feet off the ground or it can be set to a different decision height depending on the current airport you are flying into. Now secondly the current the touchdown speed we are going to want is about touchdown speed of 135 knots. So as we come close we we'll decrease the auto throttle down to 135 as we come in to land. Thirdly on the ILS approach there is no flare procedure on the auto land. So once we get under 200 feet we're going to want to turn off the auto throttle so that we can prepare to activate the reverse thrusters and also turn off the autopilot so that we can about 50 feet above the airfield nicely flare the front of the plane up bring the nose slightly up so that we can have a safe l touchdown vertical speed of between minus 50 feet per minute and minus 250 feet per minute to, co to make sure that the wheels do not explode and that we do not crash. Now. We're going to, I'm going to continue flying the approach in now and decrease the speed to 135 knots. We should start slowing down. As you can still hear, we still have the Nav 1 frequency going to let us know the exact DME from the airfield. Now, as we descend to 135, our final approach speed, we, you might want to increase the flaps up to 30 flaps, 30 degrees of flaps. Now, this is just a preference from the pilot. You can have it between 25 or 30, depending on the pilot. I'm going to currently have it on 30 degrees of flaps. As you can see, we're descending down below 145 knots, and we're currently 700 feet above the floor. As you can see, we're coming down nicely straight, nicely dead straight with the airport, all by the plane flying itself. Uh, let's get ready to disengage the autopilot. We're currently 500 feet above the airport. So now that we're about the right speed we're going to disengage the auto throttle so that we can get ready for the reverse thrusters to be activated and now that we're about 200 feet above the airfield we can disengage the auto throttle and possibly increase flaps to 40 just to make it slightly easier. So we're going to want to increase the throttle a bit and disengage the autopilot. Now you can see that we are coming in nicely to the airport and just as we come below 100 feet we're going to want to start to increase the nose a little so that we get that little flare up. 
see a nice little flare like that and as you get above the airfield you want to press F1 to decrease the throttles back to idle now that we've touched down you want to kind of press F2 to disengage the reverse thrusters as you become below 70 knots you're going to want to get rid of the reverse thrusters by pressing F1 and disengage the auto brake by turning it to off and you should be gliding down the runway here at about 40 14 knots, you're going to want to look for the first taxiway off, that's taxiway on the right which is currently Bravo uh, you only want to use the brakes to slow down to about 20 knots so you can easily make the turn and also disengage the spoilers by pressing the forward slash key and removing the flaps by pressing F5 now, as we come up to this turn you're going to want to increase N1 slightly so you do not stall and stop on the runway as that could be very dangerous you increase the N1 slightly up to about 40 N1 and as you reach the taxiway you're going to just want to turn off to the right as you turn off the taxiway, you're going to either let the ATC know that you're currently clear of the runway, or they're going to pass you over onto the ground controller, where you will ask for taxi instructions to the gate or parking or the fuel bay, whichever you require. Now, as you turn off the runway, as you get clear of the holding point, so you're clear of the runway, you can just stop on the taxiway and do a la after landing checklist. So after we are past the holding point, we will we'll just stop here and reduce the throttles back to idle. Now the first thing we're going to do when you go past the, when you finish landing, you're going to want to turn off the nav identification switch as it could get quite annoying. Now we've turned that off, you're going to want to go back to the lights. Now after you've left the runway, you're going to want to turn the landing lights off and the strobe light off. This is because you're currently not on the runway and you're taxiing, so you do not currently require these. And you're also going to want to turn the taxi light on as you will now currently be taxiing down the runway, Ta taxiway, sorry. So now you can close the light switch using shift and 5. You can also turn the VOR off as you do not currently need that anymore. Now at this point I'm going to end the tutorial as that was the ILS approach into the airport. Hope you found that reasonable and if you have still have any problems or any questions you can contact me via the flybva.org website. My name is Kieran Pollard and you can also contact me on the BVA TeamSpeak server all found from the website. Hope you enjoy and thank you.